These are seven supplements that are showing serious scientific promise when it comes down to cognitive function. So what's interesting is a lot of things we look at in say just geriatric populations where we say, okay, if you're older, this might protect from cognitive decline. But I wanna touch on not just that, also things that are improving cognitive function, making us feel sharper, more alert, without just having to load up on caffeine. So let's just jump into this very first one that has shown promise for a while, but now it's really starting to rage when it comes down to the newer science. So it's creatine. Now here's the deal. Creatine is an energy supplement. It is not a muscle supplement, bottom line. Okay, we have more mitochondria in our brain than people give credit to, okay? We produce a lot of energy in the brain, something that is 2% of our body weight makes up 20 to 30% of our energy demand. So we think, okay, creatine is gonna give you brute strength. Well, you don't feel brute strength in your brain, right? You don't feel that straining unless you're like really working hard, right? But creatine makes it so that you can have those short-term quick bursts where you can actually get the energy to the brain cells. There was a study that was published in Experimental Gerontology that took a look at six different studies that was quite interesting. Found that creatine improved short-term memory, improved intelligence, and improved reasoning. Man, I'd love to give this to some people that I think need some better reasoning in life. Anyhow, point is, is that it seems to be very powerful, not just for geriatrics, but also just for quick bursts. You don't need as much as you think either. One to three grams is all you need. This next one is super cool. One of my favorites that I've cycled on and off just to experiment. Seems to work really well in combination with MCT oil too. It's alpha GPC. Now, what it does is it helps create acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that is required for just brain energy, for neuronal energy, right? So we need acetylcholine. It's one of the most important neurotransmitters as far as just our nervous system and our brain is concerned. So if we look at a study that was published in the International Journal Society of Sports Nutrition, we see some pretty interesting stuff. They had subjects take in 200 milligrams alpha GPC, 400 milligrams alpha GPC versus 200 milligrams caffeine or placebo. In a dose dependent fashion, they found the more alpha GPC that they consumed, the better their overall cognitive function was. But not just that, significantly better than caffeine too. So it seems that you might need more to really elicit a powerful effect that's gonna be noticeable. So 400 milligrams might be a good starting place. And it's a pretty safe compound to take but it is a precursor or it does help create acetylcholine, which means you also need choline. So try to eat it with some eggs so you get that choline as well. Next one is one that I've gotten on my high horse a lot about over the years, but now we're seeing evidence in younger populations, which is cool. It's DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, the specific DHA fat in fish oil. Everyone talks about EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, which is great for modulating inflammation, but DHA is where it's at for the brain. So there's a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took a look at 176 young adults. Okay, so these were younger people. Most of the DHA research is in older populations, so it's so nice to see this in younger peeps. So what they did is they had them consume 1.16 grams of DHA for six months. So daily, they just took in a fair bit. That's a lot, that's over a gram of straight DHA. Like if you looked at a fish oil pill, it might be a gram or two, but more than likely the fish oil you're taking is only gonna be like 200 or so of actual DHA. So you need to get that up over a full gram of DHA. Trust me, you feel it at that dose. I can tell you from my own experience. They found that this improved their reaction time statistically significantly also improved their working memory and their episodic memory. And the reason that it's speculated to do this is it increases cell fluidity. So it improves membrane flexibility. So when you are sending signals in the brain, you need a flexible cell membrane, a neuronal membrane. That's how signals can get through really quick. It's like, imagine running through like just a wall of wax paper compared to running through a wall of concrete. Okay, you're still gonna have protection from pathogens with the wax paper, but you'll be able to run in and send your signal through a little faster, right? Because you're not gonna have to break through concrete. So the signals just are faster. I also put a link down below for Thrive Market, which may seem random, but they also sell a lot of different vitamins and supplements, and that link down below gets you 30% off your entire first grocery order. So that means supplements too. So all the things that I'm talking about today, 
you can pretty much get through Thrive Market. So if you wanted to get all of them, 30% off, you could add them to your grocery cart with your grocery membership, which is pretty cool. So that link down below saves you 30% off the entire grocery order, plus a $50 free gift. They have some really good brands of DHA there. So check them out down below. That link is right beneath this video in the top line of the description. Plus, they're not just a supplement retailer at all. Like they are mainly about food. The fact they have supplements is just an added bonus. So that link down below. Okay, this next one is one that I used to see like in the gas stations, like in little vials. And I haven't seen them forever, but it's ginkgo biloba. Remember ginkgo was like big back in the 90s. Well, it's kind of having a resurgence in terms of the research because it seems really cool for the brain. There's a study published in Neuroradiology that gave subjects 60 milligrams of ginkgo biloba two times per day. Uh, they did find that there was increased blood flow to the white matter. So specific blood flow to basically the information superhighways in our brain. That was pretty interesting. But when you look at the higher dose data with ginkgo is where it gets interesting. So there's a study that was published in Aging Neuroscience that took a look at 10 studies on people with dementia or mild cognitive impairment. It's always hard to say. Anyhow, what they found with that is that in a dose dependent fashion, the higher the dose of ginkgo, the better their scores on various cognitive tasks. 240 milligrams seeming to be one of the best numbers. So the hard part that we have with that is, okay, you have to dose it appropriately. But we see improvements at lower dose, but to really squeak out benefits that you might actually notice as a younger person, you might need to be upwards of 200, 250 milligrams. Which leads me into this next one that tends to go hand in hand with ginkgo in a lot of ways, that's ginseng. Now, specifically red ginseng. American ginseng is good for other things, but Korean red ginseng is the one that really has the potency as far as at least the research is concerned. What we do have is an interesting study from ginseng research that shows that 4,500 milligrams of red ginseng did improve cognitive function on what's called the P300 test, which really looks at latency. So they had an improvement in what's called latency. So basically being able to respond to a task really quick. I'm not a neuroscientist, but the P300 is a pretty standard test for these kinds of things. Then we have anthocyanins, which are gonna be the antioxidant that's in berries. So although I could just say eat a bunch of berries, and that's a very real thing to do, you can also get anthocyanins in direct supplement form in a more concentrated fashion. So there's a study published in Nutrition Reviews that took a look at 13 studies, so it's big data, found that anthocyanin supplementation increased processing speed and increased memory. Okay, now that doesn't sound like much because it sounds like just a basic thing, but when you're looking at 13 human studies with specific anthocyanins, and then you cross-reference that with the data that we have from polyphenols like anthocyanins in blueberries and the effect on cognition, we know there's something there. So yes, eat blueberries, eat acai, eat blackberries, eat things like that for sure. Get those in your diet, but also be curious about anthocyanin supplements as they start to come out more and more and more because we're starting to see more of them pop up and it might be a very powerful neuroprotectant. Which leads me to the last one, which is definitely one that needs more research, but it's so inexpensive and has so much promise, it's quite interesting. It's acetyl L-carnitine. Now carnitine is really good for fat metabolism, right? It helps shuttle fat into a mitochondria. Acetyl L-carnitine supposedly helps the brain. Now. That is up for debate because there's some research that debunks it, but carnitine in general is really good for fat metabolism, so perhaps acetyl L-carnitine helps fat metabolism in the brain. Anyhow, we don't have research on that, but there is some cool data that's come out recently. There's a randomized control trial that gave dementia patients 500 milligrams of acetyl L-carnitine three times per day for 28 weeks, and they saw significant cognitive improvement just by adding that in. Now that's somewhat observational, so let's understand what could be happening here based on some mechanisms. For one, it's an agonist to mitochondrial function, so it stimulates mitochondrial function. So perhaps what's happening is it's stimulating the mitochondria in the brain to like kickstart again, which in someone with cognitive impairment, that could make a big difference. It also has an antioxidant effect on the central nervous system. So in people that are dealing with high levels of stress or people that are older, it could be beneficial by reducing some of the overall oxidative stress in the brain or nervous system in general. It's also a neuronal growth factor, which means it might help the growth of new neurons, which is pretty interesting. And lastly, it helps with membrane stabilization. So again, 
keeps the membranes clean and clear and functioning properly so signals can transmit between neurons properly without signals getting distorted. So this last one is a little bit more woo-woo witch doctor, but it's worth exploring. All of these things are dirt cheap. The most expensive one is probably gonna be DHA, but you need to treat that the way that you should. It's probably the most important for short term and long term. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow. And don't forget to check out Thrive Market down below.